Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. 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 Hey, good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We've got another minute or so before it's time. So I'll just let that time go past. I pray everyone's doing well. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, it's 10 o'clock. We'll go ahead and uh, get started and we'll open with prayer. I'm sure uh, more will be joining us. Uh, Brother Moore, would you open us in prayer? Sure. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thankful that you have blessed us to see another day. Thank you, Father, that you have given us a mind to want to study your word, O oh God, to learn of you and your way. We thank you, Father, for watching over us while we slept last night, waking us up this morning, clothed in our right mind, Father, with the use of the, the limbs of our bodies. We thank you for all that you are and all that you do. We pray that you would continue to bless us, bless our teacher, continue to give him that wisdom and knowledge and Help him, Father, to recall the things that he has studied. We pray, Father, that we will receive it in our hearts, that we may understand the message in your scripture, in your word. Be with, <clears throat> be with us and guide us throughout this hour, Father, of study. We pray to thee in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Brother Moore. So this week, uh, we're Taking it up in chapter eight. Just a quick recap. Last week we had finished up uh, verse 20 of chapter six, and we went ahead and finished up chapter seven all, all the way through. Uh, and chapter six, verse 20 on, um, Solomon was giving a sort of warning to, uh, to his son about, you know, the dangers of adultery, you know, he followed up with a couple of rhetorical questions um, and compared adultery as if it were to take a fire, you know, into your own clothes, into your own chest, right? And it's like, if you were to take fire into you, would you be burned, right? And of course, the answer is yes, you would be burned if you were just to take fire into your hand. Um, and so he, you know, compares this analogy to you know, the, the folly, the foolishness of adultery. And then, you know, in chapter seven, he continues to give these warnings on what it is, um, you know, when, when a young foolish man or a foolish person goes towards a promiscuous person and, you know, goes and seeks that. And then he continues to use that uh, visual of adultery and what it does in the, to, to, the, to the marriage union you know, um, and, and how it's very important to stay away from those sort of things because falling into adultery is falling into a trap that is tra the same trap that leads to, uh, to death, right? And so now we're picking it up again in chapter eight. And in chapter eight, we're going to see this um, sort of uh, speech that wisdom gives. So we're now seeing wisdom uh, again personified. You know, we saw it a few chapters earlier where wisdom is, uh, you know, crying out, like, who, who's going to listen to me? Who's going to hear me? I'm calling out for you. Who's going to do it? Who's going to hear me? And so we're going to see the same thing here. 
um, chapter 8, verse 1, uh, Solomon writes, does not wisdom cry? And again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Or I'm sorry, from the King James Version, not New King James, from the King James Version. Um, but I probably will go back and forth with the New Living Translation as I've done in the past. Uh, verse 1, does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and you fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Uh, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. You know, this is um, these first 11 verses that we're seeing here. We're, we have to be really careful with this. Um, I'm finding, especially with a lot of the, uh, the study that I've been doing, a lot of the sermons that I've been listening to this, um, it seems that this is a favorite use of, you know, other organizations, other sects, um, namely Jehovah's Witnesses, who would like to use this text in reference to uh, Christ. And, um, and, and so although I do agree with many of the things, we're going to start reading things here in a bit about wisdom that, um, you know, are, are, it's a literary device. You know, we're seeing wisdom personified here, right? And we've already touched on this in the past. Solomon could have easily have made wisdom given him given wisdom male characteristics or personifications right um but because he was writing to his son he has personified wisdom as a female but it's really interesting because we could see a lot of uh similarities between christ's ministry while he was here on earth with what wisdom is saying here you know christ was out in these streets he was he was out there uh seeking people who were wanting to know the kingdom right um and it's and it's really interesting how um, how how close these two things these these two uh, 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 this personification of wisdom is alongside with Christ's actual ministry. Um, for example, we see here verse eight: all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. So let's go back. Let's go up. Let's go up a couple. Um, verse six. One more, sorry. Verse five. Oh, you simple, understand wisdom. So who's wisdom calling out to? The, those who are simple-minded, those who who recognize that they may not have full discernment, full wisdom, those who who recognize, man, I don't got it all together. That's who wisdom's calling. The person who is simple. I would like to think that I'm simple, but I, I know I'm not. I know um, my mind is constantly going um, I know I can be fairly, fairly complicated, especially with how I, um, think things through. Sometimes I think things through too much instead of, uh, just letting things be right. Or, uh, instead of just taking things with a grain of salt, it's, it, it can be a little difficult. So, um, I, you know, I put a lot of mental effort into things. And, and rarely really acting upon them, but it's more of like a mental thing, right? Um, but I would like to consider myself to be a simple person. That way I can reach out to, towards wisdom, right? So I could be one of these uh, pe people who are willing to accept understanding. And we see this here that cr in Christ's ministry, Christ was, wasn't calling out to those who thought that they were better than everybody else, right? What did he say? He said, I didn't call the righteous I didn't come to call the righteous to repentance. I came to call the unrighteous to repentance. I came to call the person who knows that they are in need of a, um, 
of, of a doctor, right? Somebody who, who knows that they need help. And this is something that uh, as a simple person, we should be able to understand if we consider ourselves simple, we should know that we can't do it on our own. We, we need righteous or we need wisdom to be able to shine this light to our path, right? As we saw uh, last week, how wisdom is this, this light, this lamp, you know, this, this sort of way to navigate us around. You know, if, if we're pr proud in the heart, we won't recognize how simple we really are, that we can just, that, that we can reach out towards understanding to have this, or towards wisdom to have uh, this understanding. Uh, Brother Mart Martez. Uh, yes, Sister Jackson. Can you tell me what chapter are you, you guys in that I yeah, we're, we, we're, we picked it up in chapter eight and we've just read um, verses one through 11. Chapter eight of what book? Uh, Proverbs. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. Yeah, you're very welcome, sis. Um, and so we're seeing this, this sort of con this, this contrast, right, between wisdom and, uh, I guess not so much contrast, but this comparison between wisdom and, and Christ and his ministry. Um, and, and this is something that it's very clear, you know, um, if, if you can deny yourself and continue to seek Christ, it is going to be better off for you as opposed to being proud and holding on to all those desires, right? And saying, you know what, I can do it on my own. You know, proud people aren't, aren't so, so simple, right? Uh, in verse nine, he says, you know, they are all plain to him that understands. Uh, this clearly is, um, it, it's interesting. It, it, to me, it clearly speaks to um, how Christ used parables to speak to the masses. And to, you know, it, it's interesting because to his disciples, he explained those parables. And even when they asked him, they said, um, you know, why, why do you speak in such parables? And he says, well, because some people will understand and some people won't understand. And those who have been given, you know, this sort of this, this gift, this discernment, they will understand what I'm trying to say as to, as opposed to what, um, you know, to, to those who don't understand, who are thinking on these earthly things, they're never going to understand um, the heavenly things that, that, that I'm giving them, right? Um, you know, S Sister Gwen posted James 1, verse 5, and I think this is a really great um, uh, um, verse because we have to remember who, who we need to ask wisdom of. Uh, James 1, verse 5, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and abrades not, and it shall be given to him. But, uh, but we got to remember verse six, but let him ask in faith and nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven, uh, wave of the sea driven with the wind and then tossed, right? So when we're asking for wisdom, it's really important that we're asking steadfastly, not, not asking where we're hesitant within ourselves. Like, well, do I really want it? Well, do I know? Because that man, that person who, who doesn't, um, who who hesitates, who who's wavering, who doesn't know what they want, just like the wave of the sea, you know, they get brought in, but then they get tossed back out, right? They're they're in this constant flow of never really knowing what what they're seeking after, right? Which is a sad, sad case for for many of us because we can fall into that state where we don't really know what what it is that we're seeking for. Um, and so when we're praying and we're asking, uh, we're asking uh, God in prayer, um, may, maybe those things aren't given over to us because we're not set firmly within ourselves. Excuse me. Um, and, and, and it's interesting because when, when we're hesitant like that in our prayers, it really, it really affects us um, quite a bit because then, you know, uh, we're not standing steadfast within our prayers. So then maybe the things that we ask for in prayer don't come to fruition. And so we start gaining this sort of resentment within ourselves towards God because, man, Lord, I've been praying for this, but you're not listening to me. And it's, and it's probably because we're not right within ourselves when we're speaking to God, right? We, we might be praying for um, things that are, are, see, are, you know, they're in our hearts, but we're not seeking God first and foremost to be able to receive those things that line up with God's will and God's character, right? Um, as, as we move through, though, 
Uh, you know, one of the one of a couple other things that interested me here were verses uh, ten and eleven, where Solomon writes, "Receive my instruction, right, <laughs> and not silver." Yeah, that kind of reminds me a lot of what Christ said. You know, don't worry about the riches of this world, but instead store up for yourselves riches in heaven, right? Because you can't take the riches in this world with you when you go on to the next world. So store up riches for yourself in the next world and not in this world, right? Uh, for wisdom is better than rubies and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Um, you know, <laughs> That, that really, it just blows my mind when we see that it is better to have this wisdom so that we could apply it to our lives and be able to excel, maybe not just materially, but emotionally, right? Intellectually, we have this wisdom. We don't need to just be held down by these sort of material things. We realize that there is more to this world. And although wisdom is this sort of abstract um, concept, right? We are very well aware that when we have wisdom, we could apply it to um, advance our our lives, right? Um, and and I joked around in the past. I used to say, you know, the more things I know. Well, Solomon said, you know, the more things we know, and he this is written in Ecclesiastes. You know, the more heartache we have. You know, I've always had this same sort of feeling how you know the, the less I know the better I know because the more I know the, the more headache I have right mm -hmm. and in this case when we have more wisdom we're better off than if we we had more money um which is, right. is different than just knowing stuff right do we does would anybody like to add anything any questions we may have before we keep moving through Okay, uh, verse 12, we read, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. So now we're seeing this again, this personification of wisdom and wisdom actually speaking here. Um, you know, of course, Solomon is still writing but Solomon has given wisdom this personification. Um, and we're going to see how, how wisdom dwells, right? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. You remember what? What Christ told Pilate when he when he was being sentenced to death, you know, Pilate tells Christ, you know, you're gonna answer me like this. Don't you know I have the power to to take your life? What did, what did Jesus say? You only have power because it's been given to you from above, right? This 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 strikes so similarly to me because it's only by wisdom that Pilate was able, was able to even have that opportunity to be able to rule over a nation, right? To be the governor of Judea, right? He says, and, and when, when you see that, we, we start to understand, you know, the, the leaders in our world, they were put there because we, you know, maybe not throughout the world, may, maybe more so, let, let's, let's take our nation, you know, we have the opportunity to vote in officials, right? So we have to use the discernment that we have to vote in these officials. And a lot of times those officials don't really work for us, right? They end up having their own agenda many times. But that's that's in part because they wanted to go their own route, even though the public may have used discernment and said, well, you know, this person's values line up with my values, and this is who I'm going to vote in, be using the discernment we have, right? We see, and we see this a lot in this in this nation. Other nations are not so fortunate because there may they may still be going through a um, some 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 kind of dictatorship, right? You know, we see this a lot in 
uh, smaller nations in Africa. Uh, we, of course, we see this in North Korea. We see this in China. We see this in Russia. Um, some nations are still under a dictatorship rule and not a, a, a sort of democratic republic rule, right? Where there's elected officials, people are voted in so that they can, uh, you know, do what they say they're going to do. But we see this a lot in this nation as to where, you know, we using our discernment and our wisdom will elect officials in. And sometimes our discernment isn't, uh, isn't as great as we would imagine it, right? Sometimes our discernment is faulty and we elect officials who do not have our best interests in mind, right? But if we really, you know, we, we prey on these things and, and we're truly, truly seeking, you know, what we need to do. I, I love verse 11 because if we're truly seeking in wisdom, we'll have something even more valuable than rubies, right? It's more valuable than all the things that can be desired, right? All the things that we desire, you can't, they, can't, they don't even compare to wisdom, you know, all the material stuff that I want for my home, all the, all the material stuff I want in this life for my family does not even compare to wisdom, to being able to hold on to that and, and, and apply it in my life because I'll be better off when I have wisdom as opposed to having, you know, all this material substance. Um, and when I have, and when I'm given wisdom, um, I have to recognize wh where this wisdom came from. Did it come from within myself? It did not. It was already there. It was already outside of me. And because of this wisdom, I was able to obtain it. Sister Moore? I was just thinking, um, sometimes you think that you are utilizing wisdom when you make decisions about things and people. And later on in life, it hits you that you did not use the wisdom that you should have used in making those decisions. And then sometimes it means that you have to go back and, and apologize to people. Sometimes these decisions that you, you thought you were using wisdom are, 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 are uncorrectable. So I just, I was thinking about that, uh, having a conversation with with Bill Moore this morning regarding something similar to that, how we thought we were using wisdom, but it, it was actually not wisdom. You know, that's interesting because we can, we can think that we're acting on wisdom many times, but the outcome may not always be what we have projected, right? We, we think this is going to turn out this way and maybe it's because of an outside influence that it may have it, it may it didn't turn out that way right um and and that's you know one of those things that's part of the chance of life and a lot of times it is because we thought it was clear wisdom that we were using but it was faulty and so it fell apart because and and the reason could there could be many reasons to it um i use the reason that I didn't pray. I know for personally for myself, when something falls apart in my hands, it's because I didn't pray on it. I didn't, I didn't, I just acted on it. Man, I need to get this done, right? I need to do this for the family. But what ends up happening? I end up putting myself in a little more debt instead of just praying on it, right? I end up hurting somebody's feelings instead of praying on it with how I should approach you know, my delivery or, and whatnot. And every situation is different. But personally for me, when something falls apart in my hands, it's because I didn't, I didn't seek guidance from God on that. And that's, that's my own personal thing. I'm sure for, I'm sure everybody else has their, uh, their, their kind of like aha moment when they're like, man, I, I thought I was acting on wisdom, but I really wasn't. Right. Um, but again, for me personally, it's, because I didn't pray on such things that things have fallen apart in my hand. If I'd have given more time to that, especially in prayer, you know, a lot of times when we're praying, um, and, and again, personally, when I'm praying, I, I can feel that sometimes it can become a little mechanical, that I'm kind of in, in, a, in a mode. And so I try to, in the middle of my prayer, I try to stop myself and just be quiet. 
and just and just meditate in that moment and think on Christ and think on God, because I can I I recognize that my prayer is just um, more of a ritual and not of actually seeking God. And that's one of the things that hurts the most. When I when I find myself doing that, I have to stop everything I'm doing, and I have to just take a moment to to not think not not say anything unless I unless I curse myself in doing that you know because I'm just thinking it, it, I'm not I'm not thinking I'm just it's just coming out as a sort of recit recitate like a recital right and, and we fall in danger when we start just doing that you know it, it's one of those things where if we're not careful we could fall into that danger of these you know repetitious prayers that eventually have no meaning right and and what ends up happening with that is you know, our, our prayers ended up becoming a sort of a, a, a useless thing, right? The sort of vain thing that um, doesn't doesn't get through because we're just doing it out of habit as opposed to doing it out of the, the want and the need to, to connect ourselves with our creator, right? Um, and and that, in, that in part comes to with a lot of the wisdom that we use to apply to that. Some of us may not feel the same way. Some of us may feel, well, my repetitious prayers get through, but, but that's not always the case. You know, what, what matters the most is how you're living in according to God uh, and according to his word so that he can hear your prayers so that his prayers will go through you. It's just like Peter says, you know, the prayers of the righteous man are the ones that heard, but God doesn't hear the, the prayers of the ungodly, you know? I, I and I, I've said this in the past. You know, I see this a lot on, on social media. People they want to live their life, and then when something bad happens, they're asking for prayers. And it's like, well, I would hope that godly people pray for you because those are the prayers they're going to get through, as opposed to you know you're just asking random people for prayers. And what else do they send you? They send you positive vibes. They say you good thoughts. Those positive vibes and good thoughts aren't going to do anything for your life, especially if you're seeking prayer, right? And a lot of people, they don't, they don't really realize that. They just think, well, you know, I'm praying to God. God will answer my prayers because I believe in God. Well, God's not going to answer somebody who wants to live their life six days a week. And then on, on Sunday, they're, they're like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to go, go worship. But the other six days, I was out running around with women. I was out cursing up a storm. I was out getting into fights and arguments. I was out there living, uh, living a world that is not honorable to the God that I serve. Right. And it's because they're not using that sort of wisdom. Um, and just, and just as you said, uh, sister Moore, they're not, um, they're, they're thinking they're acting on, on the knowledge that they have, the wisdom that they have, but it's only because they only have such a limited knowledge that they're using that knowledge in a way that's not benefiting them. Um, and, and in, in, in the world and this is both you know christians and non-christians it just depends on how they decide to use it uh sister chris uh, do you, have, do you like to add something yes i i i, I want to ask the question when you made the comment um that the prayers that god will adhere to but how can you determine when a person is ungodly and god doesn't hear their prayer but those that are Christian will normally pray for that individual that may be ungodly. Yeah. And his prayer will be answered because the Christian uh, that prayed we'll for that person, surgery. you know, received what that person was asking for, even though at the time he may have been ungodly and not knowing the consequences of repentance. You understand? So I, I, I was a little baffled on that right there because I, I have known and even though I'm a child of God and everything, but there have been moments that I have prayed and according to the scripture, when it says seek it and, know her husband. and knock and the door shall open. Well, I, I, I have prayed at some points and the door just barely opened. It didn't open all the way, but it's not saying that, you know, I wasn't an ungodly person because I do fear God. But back to the common part of an ungodly person, and their prayers can be answered through Christians that pray for them that they may know and ask that person to pray for them. You know, it's interesting because you think about, you know, let, let's look at our, our salvation for a moment, right? Um, 
we alone, when we when we go up to God in our death, right, by ourselves, whereas as Isaiah said, we're like fil filthy rags. You know, we can't come next to His righteousness. This is why we need the righteousness of Christ to cover us, so that we could come up to God. And when God says, when we are judged, Christ is right there next to us. He's our advocate that says, "Don't worry about him, because I've already, I've, I have, I have died for him, and he has accepted me." Right? And anybody who has not accepted Christ, when they come up to God, their Christ is going to be on the other side. Like, they didn't want to know me, so I can't, I can't vouch for that person. Right? Isn't that a lot? What a prayer is like. When a prayer of the prayer of the righteous that that go up to God, right? When, when uh, in James, when he wrote, you know, if you have something to confess, go go to those in in the congregation, and the prayer of the righteous man is going to be that prayer that avails much, right? It's it's that prayer because you go and seek a, a, the prayer of somebody who you perceive to be as a, a righteous person. You see how they live as as a fa as a member of the body of Christ, you see how they are as uh, uh, family people, right? How they raise their families. You, you see the example that they're setting. So you know what a righteous person would look like. And so you go and seek their prayers. That's, we know what Christ, what Christ did and, and what he continues to do for people. And so that's why we go and seek Christ because we know we can't do it on our own. If I'm an unrighteous person and I know that there's somebody godly living um, in, you know, whether it be in my own house or in my area, or I know somebody who is, um, very, very devout in, in their walk towards Christ, you know, I, I would know that that's the person that I need to give me prayer, right? I'm not just going to ask anybody for prayer. And this is something that I had a pretty long discussion with, uh, especially, uh, it was with one of my cousins a while back. He and I had gotten into this huge thing over social media. And so, um, it was interesting because the topic came up of prayer and I said, well, you know, I'm, I wouldn't ask you for prayer because I know I, I just in our exchange, I can see your bitterness. I can see your anger towards people who aren't Christians. Um, you know, your, your, your righteousness, you know, and I see, and I can see that in the things that you're telling me. So because of that, I would never ask you for prayer because chances are, um, my, my, my prayer wouldn't be answered, especially with the way that you speak, with the way that you talk, with the way that you conduct yourself. Um, I, I don't, I don't believe I, I could be wrong. God could be answering each and every one of his prayers. I could be wrong, but with the, um, with the way that he presents himself, right. With the way that he acts and the way he behaves, the way he talks, I couldn't believe that though. And because of that, I'm not going to go and ask him for prayers over, over my life, over my, my well-being, right? I would much rather go to the elders in my church, right? The deacons in my church, the people that I know that have set the example of what godly living is like. Um, and and I, I believe that people who are not in the body um, would recognize that. They would recognize, you wouldn't go to um you know uh, uh what, what's a, you wouldn't go to a bartender for um heart surgery right you wouldn't you wouldn't go to um a, a guy who takes out the you know who you wouldn't go to the garbage man once a week to fix your sink right you know who to go to to ask for certain things of right um and and how you how a person views their life because as christians if we're supposed to be the examples then we need to set that example for people so that they so that when they need something they know who to go ask for right you know who to ask for what you need from right if if you needed a a, a checkup on on you know your blood you, you needed you would go to the doctor you you wouldn't go to a carpenter right you, you know and and this is just innate in all of us even if we're not in the body of Christ and we've, we've heard, we've heard the gospel before. We may not agree with the gospel, but we see how th these people are living. We see, you know, the, the values that they have. Um, 
we can use that discernment to know it's like, well, if they really believe that, and I'm kind of on the verge of believing that, but I really don't know, I'm going to ask this person to pray for me. And let's see how that works out. Because a lot of times it's, it's what we see that brings us over. You know, I, I, I've said in the past, I saw my wife's character and I didn't understand it. And it's one of the, one of the things that brought me over because I saw, um, I saw how she wasn't just going to give up on our marriage because I wasn't a member of the body of Christ. I saw, I saw that character as one of the things that brought me over to Christ. A lot of, a lot of times, you know, we see these things and it's, it's evident that we can be able to seek after the same thing because if it's a, a, it'd be a phenomenon if, um, I guess it is a phenomenon that devout Christians who are truly seeking after Christ can all behave in the same way. Like that's a phenomenon. When you see true devout Christians who truly love each other, who are truly taking care of each other's needs, right? Who are helping one another out, who are not angry, who love everybody, who, who are uh, seeking the well-being of others. You know, in, in my experience in the world, it's not many people. And the people who do act like that, they're really doing it just to kind of gain some sort of a, a prestige, right? Like they're trying to be honored. Like, hey, look at me. I'm helping out. I'm loving, right? As, as opposed to just doing it on their own, doing it for the sake of just being good. They're doing it for their own sake. Um, you know, when I see that in Christian communities, it really blows my mind because it shows that the power of Christ is really working. You know, a lot of people, they don't, they don't know to seek after those things. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where if, if I was in the world and I was seeking after, and I was seeking prayer and I knew my prayers weren't going to be heard, I would go, I would go and seek somebody who I know is living that life and seek and, and ask them to pray for me. But that's because I know that's because I was shared the gospel as a young person, right? Because I knew what, what it was. Um, for the person who doesn't know, I can only hope that they would go and seek seek prayers to have their lives turn around. But it, it could get a little, it gets a little hairy, especially when you don't really know where to go, you know. Let's let's keep moving. Um, verse twenty, he says, "I lead in the way of righteousness." I'm sorry, let's go up. I'm sorry. Verse 17. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yeah, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. And again, this is really interesting because a lot of these things, these are uh, characteristics that we could place on that, that that we could place on Christ. You know, uh, Christ loves those who seek after Him, right? Um, so He says, "Those that seek Me early shall find Me." Again, this takes me back to Deuteronomy six in the Shema, right? When we get up early, we, we, we talk about the law, right? When we're walking, we, we, we talk about the law. When we're with our kids, we talk about the law. When we go to bed, we talk about the law, right? We bind this thing on us. When we seek this, this, this concept of the law, right? We seek it early, and it's, it's going to be there when we, when we find it, right? I think a lot of um, what, what Christ said in, in, in Revelations you know, I'm standing at the door and knocking and anybody who, who wants lets me in, let me in and I will eat with you. Right. I'll sit down with you, but it, only if you want not, I'm not going to force myself only if you want, I'm, I'm right here. I'm at the door. I'm knocking. It's up to you to open the door. Same thing here. Those that seek me early, they'll find me. If you knock on, if, if you answer the door, that's being not you don't have to you don't have to go go far to look 
because he's right there, right? W wisdom is, is there if you're willing to, to seek to find, right? Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yeah, than fine gold and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. And so these are those verses that I was telling you about that um, Jehovah's Witnesses in the past have used to say that wisdom is a created being. And because wisdom is uh, Jesus personifies wisdom, then Jesus must also, must also be a created being. But God didn't become wise later on. You know, wisdom is a characteristic of God that he has had always, right? If God is, um, it does not have a beginning, then that means wisdom does not have a beginning because wisdom has always been with God. God has always had wisdom. It's, it's something that has never, um, that has never changed. Wisdom did not come before or after God, but was with God, Um I think that's really, really interesting. You know, it's, it's a characteristic that is that God shares along with his other characteristics, like his, um, his mercy, his kindness, right? His grace. These are characteristics of God that God has, right? So there's no way that he could have, um, th that wisdom could have been created because, and, and we're going to see this right here. Uh, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. So before all these things happen, God, God had wisdom, right? God had this thing. He never created it. It was something that it's always been. Um, when there were no depths, verse 24, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave, the sea, he, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. So we're kind of seeing like wisdom is almost as if it was, uh, wisdom was almost as a child. It was brought up with God. He, he grew up uh, knowing God, being with God, right? Um, which is a really, you know, we see that wisdom had to have been around because God uses wisdom to create the earth. This is, we've read this already. It, it was because of wisdom that we have the the system that we live in now, right? There's a very intricate uh, precipitation cycle, right? The rain cycle, that's very intricate. We're still learning many, many things about that. Even with all the gadgets that, you know, meteorologists have, they're still, with, they're still making a... Uh, uh, um, predictions, right? Everything's a, a weather prediction. Nothing's as nothing's fully accurate because the weather can change at any moment. But we're, we're see we see this with the weather, right? We see this within our bodies. How our bodies are the most advanced machines. Our brains are the most advanced computers that 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 are around, right? Man is still trying to replicate this with. Um, you know, the idea of artificial intelligence, trying to re replicate the human brain to make robots be able to do what man can do, what people can do, right? We, we see this, um, we see this in the stars. We, we see this everywhere in the world. You know, we spoke about the ants last week or um, a, a couple of weeks ago about how the ants, they just continue to work. They don't have a guy, they don't have a, a, a foreman, a boss or anything. They just work because they are in a system and the system continues to move, right? God used wisdom to create this world 
and to make it run in a perfect order. Um, something that I find really interesting, especially when it comes to the stars, uh, you know, science says that we're living in this ever expanding world where um, everything is expanding outwards. Yet for millennia, when we look at the sky, the stars all move in the same pattern, which personally, it doesn't make sense to me that if we're living in this universe that is ever expanding and is constantly moving outwards, right? Shouldn't the stars be in different places every night? But no, the stars move in perfect concentric circles in our night sky every evening. And this is something that we've spoken on in the past about how, um, how when when do we start putting you know our our trust in do we start putting our trust in the things that man says about this world or do we put our trust in what god says about this world and and you know i've made it clear how i feel about that i put my trust in what god says about this world because everything that man says about this world typically contradicts the, the things that god says um for example we see here in uh Verse 27, he prepared the heavens, I was there, when he set a compass on the face of the depth. You know, back we see in Genesis 1, the earth was this, um, uh, uh, was void, right? It didn't have a shape. It, it, it was without form, right? And God's spirit ran over the face of the deep. So it was just water, as, as far as God's word says. And so he puts this, it says that he set a compass upon the face of the deep. You know, when you think of a compass, you think about this sort of round sort of face, right? And that word right there goes back to the things I believe of what this world is. Uh, one of the biggest things that I've uh, heard back from is that the Hebrew language doesn't have a word for the word globe, right? And so that's why we don't, you know, we see more of this circle upon the earth or the face of a compass um, sort of speak. But, and here's, here's my, uh, my rebuttal to that. Although there is not a Hebrew word for the word globe, there is a Hebrew word for the word ball. Um, and we see this in Isaiah where God says that he's going to take this nation and toss them like a ball. So I would imagine that the Holy Spirit would have given these writers discernment enough to share what the world would be like or what the the topography of the world is like. Would it be a globe or, or would it be, you know, a flat circle? And in my, in my reading of scripture, I find that it lines up more with the latter as opposed to, you know, what modern science has, has to say on it. Mainly because especially of the language, but a lot of it because of the things that I've observed, you know, I've walked up Stone Mountain several times since I've moved here and I see, I just don't see any evidence of it. And it just proves to me that God's wisdom is higher than man's wisdom because I see how he has set everything in an intricate order as to where what man says about this world, it's more, there's more chaos involved. There's less knowledge involved. There's, there's, um, there are, let, there, there are more factors that they they create these intricate intricate equations that kind of dumb me down because if I can't understand what the equation is, then I must not know what I'm talking about, and that's what that's what I see a lot in this community as to where God and I say this community I mean the science community as to where God has used wisdom in a way to set this world in order so that it's it works in, uh, what's the term, lockstep, you know? Everything works together. The, the, the world is set in perfect order. If for any reason there is, you know, disasters, it's not because God created those things, it's because of what man has done to the world that creates these um, climate disasters, right? Um, fracking can lead to uh, earthquakes, that's one study. Um, the pollutions of the ocean, right, creates bad, um, bad environmental systems for the fish that we eat, right? These aren't things that God has done. These are things that man has done. 
um, and in thinking in our greed and not applying wisdom as to where when we apply wisdom, we can see how things work and move together uh, in, in uniformity and, and not in a sort of chaotic sort of way. Uh, verse, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 30 says, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable, habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. And again, you know, this is, I'm seeing the same correlation between wisdom and Christ, right? Um, we, we see that Christ was, was with God in the beginning. He wasn't created. He's, he's, a, he's a part of him, right? They, they share the same characteristics. And he was, you know, he was brought up with him. It was by wisdom that the world was created. Um, I believe, I believe it's in Colossians. It says that, this, you know, this world was, was created by Christ. It was, and it was created for him. Um, if anybody finds that scripture, I, I can't remember the scripture. I thought it was Colossians. I may be wrong though. Um, uh, yeah, Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, right? Wisd God used wisdom to create everything in this world. Paul just says in Colossians, that all things in this world were created by Christ. You know, that, it's, it's a really interesting correlation to see how they, uh, how, how we can view Christ as wisdom, wisdom actualized because he came into this world and he did something for others that most people wouldn't do for them, for anybody else. Most people wouldn't even do it for, you know, the person that they find the most annoying, right? Isn't that something that, that a man came and died for somebody he um, he knew he didn't have to die for, for somebody who probably was was going to be um, resentful for it. It was like, great, so now this guy died for me and I got to follow him if I want to live forever. You know, it, it's so interesting how a person, especially a person in the world, can find resentment for something so beautiful, right? For somebody who, who says, I want to do what I want. What do I care if so-and-so died for me? right? Like, how terrible is that? I know I've said those things in the past. I know in the past I've said, I want to do what I want to do. I don't care if some guy, some 2000 year old guy died for me. No, I've, I've, I've done that in the past. You know, that's blasphemy. You know, that's me. That's rejecting the Holy spirit. Right. I didn't, I didn't realize how, you know, the, the, how, how terrible of it is of a thing it is to say, because I was just caught up in my own ways. I was caught up in, in wanting to do what I wanted to do. I was never applying wisdom. I was applying my own pride to, to that situation, right? Um, but, but we see this, you know, this, this correlation. You know, Christ says, if you listen to me, if you hear me, if you do the things that I, that I tell you to do, you know, yes, you will have to go through this, this sort of suffering. But at the same time, it won't be, it, it'll be easier with me than if you were to do it on your own, right? Hear, hear instruction, be wise, don't refuse it, right? <laughs> what, is, what is Solomon right? Blessed is a man that hears me. Didn't Jesus say something like that? If you hear the things that, I, that I'm telling you, you will be better off in the, in, in the end, in the long run, right? <laughs> if, you, 
if you watch for what's happening around here, you're watchful for what's happening in the world, you know when, when these signs are coming, you know when it's going to rain, how can you not know when the Son of Man is here, right? You have to be watchful of these things. You have to hear from me, right? If you're, wait, if you're waiting for me, you think about the parable he gave of the virgins uh, burning their, their, their candles. Half of them weren't, weren't wise. They let their oil burn out. And so then they go and ask the wise ones, hey, give me some of your oil because here comes the bridegroom and I want to be taken away too. Man, those, those, vir those wise virgins said no because then our, our lamps will burn out. And then none of us will get to go because if your lamps burned out and you're trying to get half of my oil, my lamp's going to burn out. Your lamp's definitely going to burn out. Nobody's going to get to go with him. So I'm sorry, I can't do that. You shouldn't have burned all your oil. You should have been wait, waiting and watchful, right? You, sh you should know this is, this is the custom. You want to be taken by the bridegroom? You need to have your lamps burning, right? It says, whoso findeth me, findeth life. <laughs> Same thing with Jesus. When we seek after Jesus, we have, we have found life. We have, we have found um, our, our, our purpose. What, it, what does uh, Kohelet say at the end of Ecclesiastes? The whole duty of man, fear God, keep his commandments. What did Jesus say? If you, if you want to come with me, you're going to keep my commandments. You, you want to be with us? You got to keep the things that I have told you to keep. You got to take my yoke. You can't be yoked onto other people, uh, onto other things. You can't allow other things to be your crutch. I have to be your crutch. I have to be the one that carries you, right? We're going we're gonna, to um, stop there. Um, and we'll pick it up in, in chapter nine next week. Does, however, before we... Um, before we let everybody go, does anybody have any uh, anything they'd like to add? Any comments or any questions? I think Sister Moore, you had your hand up earlier, but I may have missed it. it may have been somebody else. That's okay. Uh, yeah, it would wouldn't even apply at this particular point, but that's okay. Got you. Sorry about that. Not a problem. I did have a question for everybody, and I would like to, um, you know, er, for everybody to kind of take this uh, as, as just something to think on and something to pray on. But I was wondering what everybody felt if we maybe extended the class, um, maybe maybe 30 minutes, just to kind of help um, help us have a little more time to get into the text. Now, just think about it, pray about it. And I'm asking a consensus from the class because I know everybody's got, uh, we all have things to do, uh, you know, every, every day we, we've, all, we, we've all got busy lives. Um, and so I would just like to take a consensus of the class, see who would be um, willing. And I'm not gonna do a majority rules on this. You know, if some people agree and some people don't, I'll just, I just wanna know what everybody feels if we just extend the class about half an hour, just to kind of get more, um, of the material that we're studying in um, and, and kind of help uh, uh, move our um, class along, especially we got Proverbs and we got Songs of Solomon. And once we're done with that, we're going to move right into Psalms. Um, and so just to kind of help speed it up, I would like everybody to just, you know, think on it, pray on it. And next week at the end of class, we'll just discuss that and, um, and, and we'll make a decision then if, if we could do that. But I would just like to get everybody's thoughts on that. Um, I don't want to just say, hey, from now on, we're doing 30 minutes extra. Um, I, I really would like everybody's feedback on that. Um, aside from that, are there any prayer requests or anything anybody would like to add to today as well? <clears throat> I have a prayer request. Yes. You going to do it? Okay. Brother Montana? Yes. I have a prayer request. Um, my granddaughter go to Elite Scholars Academy, and the principal asked me to pray for them. Dr. Shaw, she's the principal of Elite Scholars Academy, 
if you heard on the news yesterday, they indicted those two coach that um, that child had died from heat stroke back in 2019. Tiana goes to that school, and uh, Dr. Shaw asked me yesterday to keep them in prayer, and I said I will, and I want the class to pray for them also. And my daughter taught that young lady when she was in, in, in kindergarten, and it's still mm -hmm. so dear to her heart as well. She knows the oh, family yes. very well, yes. Oh, yes. I've been praying Please, for that, yes, when I saw that yesterday, yes, so, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, and what was the name of the school? Elite Scholars Academy. Elite Scholars Ac Academy. Uh, it's in Stockbridge. Um, Tiana goes to that school. She's been there since fifth grade. And the family last name is uh, the Bell family. Bell? Uh-huh. B-E-L-L. -L. Uh-huh. Their daughter passed uh, back in 2019 from heat stroke. And they oh indicted the two coaches yesterday uh, from uh, murder. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's, that's sad. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Well, I definitely mm. keep uh, the school and that family in prayer. Good morning. This is Sister Kenny Brew. I just want to piggyback on that story. And that's that we pray for all teachers and school personnel because some of them, I've, I personally have witnessed it because I used to be a, uh, a very frequent substitute teacher and I also worked as a paraprofessional. I've, I've seen how adults can mistreat children. So let's just pray for everyone that they ex exercise godly wisdom when they're dealing with our kids in these situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Sister Gwen, I see you have your hand up. Good morning, everybody. This is Johnny. Hey, how you doing, Brother Johnny? I'm good. This is just an update on uh, my situation. Uh, first, giving honor and praise to the Lord and God that we all serve and love. I am now cancer free. Um, yeah. Very good. Amen. Amen. So for all the love. Hallelujah. The cards, the letters, all that is coming in. Uh, we just love you guys and thank you for loving us as much. And I just want to ask for prayers that as I go through my observation, yeah, I can't say the word observation period, which is the next 10 years, as they continue to do my PSA levels and check to make sure that it doesn't come back. So just keep us in prayer mm -hmm. um, that God will continue to keep us clean from this um, deadly situation. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you all so much. Love y'all. Love you. Praise God. God. Amazing. Very That's good. wonderful. Yes. This is, this is, this is Vivian. Go ahead, Sister Vivian. This is Vivian. I just want to thank you all for your continued prayers. And um, Brother Wilburn is home. So just continue to pray for me that uh, I'll be strong and that uh, he'll continue to do well. Also, continue to pray for my friend, Sadie Howard, who has stage four bladder cancer. Thank you. Lord, I know. Yeah, this is Diane Brunson. I'm praying for traveling grace for myself and my son. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. This is Sister Chris Jackson. I just want to say good morning to you guys. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to say thank you for your calls, for your cards for your visitations and continue to pray for me uh, through my healing process and for the recovery of my home that got destroyed partly in the uh, storm here on the 26th of this of uh, last month. And I just pray, I have found a replacement um, coming uh, this August the 20th. And I just want to say thank you guys so much. And thank you, brother Moore and sister Moore for coming by to visit me, which meant so much to me, along with many others that called me and everything, and for your cards and for your monetary gifts. For the bottom of my heart, thank you, Gwen William, knowing what you were going through with your husband. Thank you for your calls. 
Thank you, Sister Vivian, Sister Vivian Wilburn. And there was many more. But Sister Peggy Gilchrist, thank you guys so, so, so much. And just pray my strength in the Lord that I will get better because the physical therapy hurts from this surgery. It really does. And I just pray for strength and then and just thank you all once again. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Brother Martinez, I'm being presumptuous and I probably should not, but I'm going to ask that we continue to pray for Mae Pittman and her daughter and her entire family. I know she's on, but I just want to take that opportunity to ask us to continue to pray for them. Amen. 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 This is Cliff Foster. Um, I'm requesting prayers for a family friend that was diagnosed with lung cancer. Her name is Von Seal. That's V O N C I L E. And uh, just pray that things go well with her. Oh, and I don't want to forget the Hester's family. Uh, Sister Katrina Hester and, 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 and brother and sister Slayton. Thank you guys. Thank you, Sister Hester, because that pulley show helps to pull this thing up when, it's, when I can't get it up by myself. Thank you once again. You're welcome. Amen. Look at Shad. He looks oh, cute. man. Cute little stuff in here, little black and white. All right, y'all. We'll go ahead and uh, are, are there any other prayer requests before we let out? Oh, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and. Uh, close on that um you know it's it's really really important and I, I makes me so happy to hear you know all the wonderful news that you know sister chris has given us you know, i'm happy to hear that bro brother robert's back out of rehab um i'm great to hear johnny's diagnosis uh i you know these are really just wonderful things to be um uh, you know excited about and we give glory to god that he brings us through everything, you know, I mean, be, and even Amen. if he doesn't, you know, the, the, the thing that I, I find even greater than that is that especially now in this walk that we, we are walking, um, when something may happen and it doesn't go through the way we would plan or expect it to go through, we give God glory either way. And yeah, we're great. Right. We're grateful that he has given us this opportunity Amen. To Amen. just share our, our ourselves and our testimony Amen. with That's other right. people, Amen. You know? and and it, it is. I was thinking of a uh, before we go. I just wanted to share this story real quick. Um, I was listening to a sermon on Proverbs uh, six through ten, and the pastor was saying how when he was in Israel, there was a woman at you know um, one of one of the churches there, and she did not have. Uh, um, legs like she was, she, was, she only had her torso up and she seemed like a beggar she was often you know the, the, the church in the corner nobody kind of really talked to her um, the pastor's wife went and he she put her arm around you know this woman and from my understanding she was um, I believe she had like some kind of leprosy and so people were, you know, very off putish They didn't want to stand near her, touch her or anything because of, you know, their sort of backgrounds in that, especially in that culture in Israel. And so, you know, this, um, the pastor's wife, she went and she hugged her and they spoke and they, you know, they prayed together. And so it turns out that one of the elders in the church is saying, by the way, if you need something prayed for, you should go and see that woman, the woman who the pastor's wife was speaking to so because this woman's prayers have a tendency of being answered. And it reminds me so much of what, um, what Christ has said, you know, how it has been given to the poor in this world, you know, the keys to heaven. 
And I think so much about those who are, you know, poor in the world, but they are rich in spirit because they have seen so much, um, so, so much hurt, but they continue to be steadfast in their faith, seeking after God, regardless of the, the atrocities or, or the traumatic uh, experiences that they have had to endure. You know, their faith is what still continues to hold them strong. And I think it's a beautiful example that when we go, go through things and we may not come out of them fully re recuperated or, or um, you know, we don't come out of them in a, in a way where we expect, we want to, be, to have come out of them. But when we hold on to our faith above all that, it really makes such a huge difference especially when we're sharing our, our testimony with others, especially when we're um, praying for others. Because the fact that even though I may not have everything I want, God has supplied me with everything I need. And because of that, I am absolutely grateful um, of, of where I am at. And, and I, I pray for, for each and every one of that's, us that we can all right, brother, have that same, that same sort of... Uh, um, idea within us that no matter no matter what we're going through, we still give God the glory because Amen. He, he has made it possible for us to be here. Amen. Um, That's right. So we'll That's go ahead. That's why every day the Grogan family pray for all churches of Christ, the members, Amen. all members, all Absolutely. members, all leadership, because we are we are all in need of prayer daily. Yes. Daily. Yes. Yes. Amen. I, I agree. Totally. And pray for this world. There's so much going on. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. All right, y'all. We'll go ahead and close the prayer. Um, and we'll pick it up again next week in uh, chapter nine. Let us bow. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to discuss your word, Father. This opportunity to be with one another and fellowship and although we may not be together physically lord we know that in just having these discussions and speaking on you and seeking your your face lord that you are with us and we thank you we love you father we're asking for prayers for each and every one of your children within the body of christ within within this nation and this world father mm -hmm. for the leadership throughout the world um within mm -hmm. the body that we may have the discernment that they may have the discernment to continue to guide us lord that to continue to give us the the encouragement that we need to continue to seek you father uh we're Man. asking for for prayers for um uh brother foster's good friend um sister mm -hmm. von zeal as she has just been diagnosed with cancer and that you can help strengthen them and uplift that family lord um we're asking for prayers for sister may Pittman and her family that you can be with them and strengthen them and uplift them as well uh, we're asking for prayers for Dr. Shaw at the uh, Elite Scholars Academy and for prayers for the Bell family as they continue to grieve the loss of their daughter. Um, be with all the teachers throughout this nation, throughout this world, Father, and the faculty that they may have discernment in how to uh, teach these, the, the youth of this, this world, Lord, um, that they may instill in them right godly values. And not the values of this world, not the values that will take them away from you, but values that will draw them closer to you, Lord. We're giving you uh, prayers of thanks, Father, for uh, the diagnosis of our brother, Johnny Williams, um, and that you continue to keep his body cancer free, Lord. That you continue yeah. to give them the strength to walk in this world um, and, and have the discernment to, to know uh, how, how to carry on with his with his body and that way this diagnosis will remain and he can remain cancer free lord uh we're asking for we're giving prayers of thanks for sister wilburn um and prayers uh of strength for her lord um prayers of thanks for bringing brother wilburn home uh from the, the rehab that he has gone through we're giving uh we're asking prayers for uh sadie howard as well that she may be, be able to endure through this challenge of bladder cancer, Lord. Uh, we're asking for prayers of traveling grace for Sister Brunson and, and her family and prayers for Sister Chris Jackson, uh, prayers for thanks and prayers for strength. Uh,
prayers for determination, Lord, that she may be able to go through this uh, this this trying time, especially with the damage in her house, and that you can provide all the needs for her and for each and every one of your children, Lord. We thank you. We love Man. you. We ask your will is done. We pray for this world. We know it's getting worse, Lord, but we ask for strength and determination and guidance so that we can walk in this world towards you as you continue to light our path. We thank you. Amen. We, you. we honor you. We ask your will is done in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I just want to say thank you. My phone, I, I was on the mute button and I'm talking and I realized nobody heard me. So some more, you were not out of line. Thank everybody for your prayers. Even if you did not know that my daughter had had a heart attack, I just want to say the fact that you were praying and you said, God helped the world. God helped everybody. That included my daughter because I can tell you personally, prayer makes a difference. Amen. Amen. Yes, it Amen. does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And that's why we have to stick together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Wow. Everybody have a great rest of the day. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Vida. You're very welcome. Bye. Careful. Please. Yeah, you're Great very welcome. Answer, Sister Kennebrew, yeah. I, I just got your message. I do apologize. I got it a little late. What can Blue have to say? Um, so, uh, Sister Pat, is it okay if I share this message? It was is a direct yeah, message. It's fine. Uh, she's just asking for prayers um, for her cousin, Jackie, um, that <laughs> God just blesses her with wisdom. And okay. we'll, def we'll definitely do that. Okay. All right. Okay. Goodbye, All right, all. Yeah, we got you, girl. <laughs> all right, praying for Take all of you. Amen. Okay. Love y'all. We'll see, we'll Love see you all. next week, chapter bye. nine. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, bye Shannon. <laughs> hey, Pop. What's happening? <laughs>